Hello there and thanks for joining me. So we're looking at the topic teenage mental health in time of crisis, right? And I know fully well that we are at this time where a lot of things are happening and especially the COVID-19 pandemic. And we cannot rule out the fact that you teenagers are very important and you also play a major role in, uh, in the whole thing happening around, around the world. And, and so I, I hope that this um, short um, teaching would help you come to terms with what is happening and you're able to manage yourself and manage the entire situation. Being a teenager is difficult no matter what, and the coronavirus is making it even harder. I mean, I've once been a teenager, so I understand fully well um, what teenagers can go through. Uh, the only difference is uh, I didn't experience any pandemic as a teenager. <laughs> but of course, uh, every whatever teenagers experience, I also experienced such a growing up, you know. And now we have school closures, we have canceled events, uh, many of you are missing out on some of the biggest moments of your young lives, like everyday moments, like chatting with friends, participating in class and all that. So I really do um, imagine what you're feeling and what you are experiencing at the moment. All right. But again, I want you to know that you're not alone. All right. And I don't want you to feel disappointed. I don't want you to feel terrible. And for those who are facing life changes due to the outbreak, um, they are feeling anxious, isolated, and disappointed, I want you to know that you are not alone. So I'm going to share with you six steps on how to handle um, yourself during the crisis. The first one is recognize that your anxiety is normal because you're likely going to be anxious. I need to understand that it is normal. It is okay for you to be anxious. Uh, don't feel terrible about it right it's okay for you to be unsure if school closures and alarm headlines are making you feel anxious you're not the only one uh, and in fact that's how you're supposed to feel all right because um, psychologists have long recognized that anxiety is a normal and healthy function that allows us to threat and helps us to take measures to protect ourselves even as adults we feel anxious as well all right and so your anxiety is going to help you make decisions that you need to uh, to, to be making right now, not spending time with other people or in large groups, washing your hands, not touching your face. At the end of the day, your anxiety is going to help you, um, it's going to help you pay attention, all right, to, to things that you need to pay attention to, things that you should be doing normally, all right. These feelings are helping to keep not only you safe, but others as well. So this is also how you take care of members of your community such that after now you already understand the importance of personal hygiene. You understand why you need to take good care of yourself. And while anxiety around COVID-19 is understandable, all right, make sure that you're using reliable sources such as the UNICEF and World Health Organization sites to get information or to check any information that you're getting from reliable channels, all right. It's also important to state here that to back out of if you're worried that you're experiencing symptoms, it's better to speak to your parents about it, all right, and um, keep in mind, all right, according to Dr. Damo, keep in mind that illness due to COVID-19, okay, uh, illness due to COVID-19 infection is generally mild, all right, especially for children and young adults, and she also went ahead to say that it's also important to remember that many of the symptoms of COVID-19 can be treated all right, so Dr. Damo, who um, works with the UNICEF, recommends that you let your parents or a trusted adult know if you're not feeling well or if you're feeling worried about the virus. And remember that there are many effective ways that you can uh, keep yourself um, safe, all right, and in better control of your circumstances. So remember your washing event, remember do not touch your face, remember your social distancing. Number two is create distractions. Uh, I've, I've been telling people this over time that this is a time for you to create distractions. Do not get entangled in what is happening around or what is going around. All right, there are a lot of distractions out there. You know, what we know is that when we are under chronically difficult conditions, it's very helpful to divide our problems into two categories: things I can do something about and the things that I cannot do anything about. It's more like things that you can change and things that you cannot change. So classify 
them into two like that. So that the ones that you cannot change, you know, excuse me, you know that you don't have power over this. It is what it is. It has happened like that. And so it helps you to put things in perspective and see how you can minimize the challenges or the issues, all right? But for the things that you can change, that you know that you can work around them and make things better for yourself. There are a lot that falls under the second category right now. That's okay. But one thing that helps us to deal uh, with um, that is creating distractions for ourselves. So distractions like doing homework, watching a favorite movie, um, getting in bed with a novel, all right? So that you can use that to seek relief and find balance in your day-to-day -day activity. Read a book, all right, watch a movie, uh, do house chores and other things. So just as much as possible to see to it that you are not you are not being distracted or you are not being disturbed by what is happening. Number three is find ways to connect with friends. Find ways to find new ways to connect with your friends. Uh, for some of you who are used to going out to visit friends, hanging out with friends, right now you cannot do that anymore, perhaps. All right. So it's important that you begin to look for new ways to connect with friends. So you want to spend time with friends where you are practicing social distancing, social media is a good way. So you can get creative, join all, join all the challenges. I heard that there's one on TikTok called safe, hashtag safe ants. Check it out. Now, my, because my belief is that teenagers will always find ways to connect with one another that are different from the way they've been doing before. And that's just the reality. Teenagers, you're very innovative. And so I know that you bring innovation okay to um this particular situation that you are in right but it's not going to be a good idea if you have unfettered access to um to screens or to social media it could be very harmful to so ensure that you uh that you run a screen time schedule all right with your parents or with yourself if you cannot do it with yourself if you need someone to hold you accountable you can do that with your parents you can do that with a friend or a senior colleague so it's very important that you pay attention to how much time you spend on social media okay because uh, too much access too much time rather on social media can actually affect you okay so it's important that you pay attention to that spend time with yourself all right yeah um perhaps you've always wanted to learn something i've been saying there is no time there is no time okay this is a good opportunity for you to Spend time with yourself. This is a very good opportunity for you to pay attention to those things that you've been trying to learn. All right. Do not use that as an excuse anymore this time around to say that um, you are not able to learn that. So you can go out now and learn those things. Well, when I say go out, not necessarily go out of your house. <laughs> what I mean basically is now you can learn those things without any interference. Is an instrument you want to learn? Now is the time to do that. Focus on yourself and find ways to use your newfound time in a productive way to look after your mental health. However, don't put yourself under pressure. Take those things one step at a time, all right? Don't let anyone put you under pressure. Don't feel, um, don't feel pressure. Don't be put under duress. Do it and take your time one step at a time. Number five, accept your feelings, all right? Missing out on events with friends, hobbies, and sports matches can be incredibly disappointing, right? And I understand that these are large scale losses. I mean, growing up as a teenager myself, I loved sports. So any opportunity I had to go out of the house, I would look for a nearby um, football center to quickly tap some soccer, right? Or um, branch a game center, all right, to play some games. So I understand how this feels and how upset it can really be. But you know, the best way to deal with this is to actually let yourself feel it. Admit your feelings. Admit how you are feeling. All right. If you're sad, accept that you are sad. Don't don't try to cover it up. Accept that you are sad. And with time, and then you begin to seek, you begin to seek help, and then you process your feeling. As you process your feeling, you begin to feel better. Because you begin to ask yourself, why are you feeling the way you are feeling? All right. And then, if you realize that it's persistent, then you may please seek for help. All right. If you're not feeling better in less than a week, then you may seek for may seek help from um talk to your parents or talk to an elderly one and then maybe seek professional help um some people the way they they um take charge of their sad moments is make some heart um some go to talk to their friends um which which is what we call shared sadness and they way to get connected in a time when they can where they can't be together in person 
all right, and some are finding ways to get food to food brands. So the most important thing is you find out what works for you, what is right for you, that is not harmful to others because you need to pay attention to other people as well, okay? Also, you need to be kind to yourself and others, and that's number six point. Be kind to yourself and others. Some things are facing bullying and abuse um, at school, or let me say they've been facing at school, because right now schools are probably not in session. Some are still facing, all right? Uh, but again, you, if you, you have a voice, if you can help, you know, go out there and help them. Um, if you know anyone who has been bullied, reach out to them right now um, that you're at home and try to offer support. Let them know that you care about them. Some people who are being bullied are probably happy right now that school is not in session. All right? So the moment this lockdown ends, that fear comes to them again, but you can lend a helping hand. Your words can make a difference. Your words can make them see life differently and make them look forward to even resuming school. All right. So remember that more than ever, right, we need you to be thoughtful about how you relate with other people, what you share with them, and what you say to them. Because what you say to them may hurt them. What you say to them may change things for them. So pay attention to what you say, how you say them, and who you say them to. I hope you found this educative and helpful. Thank you so much for your time. Bye.